Hello and welcome to the first episode in the mini tutorial series where I will be teaching you about the HTTP and the JSON utility plugin. This plugin introduces new functionality into Unreal Engine's Blueprint system, allowing you to create JSON files, read and write JSON files, and also send and receive HTTP requests all in Blueprint without no prior C++ knowledge. So no C++ knowledge is required to use any of this functionality. In this first episode, we're gonna look over how to actually create a new JSON file, how to set data in the JSON file using the correct set methods, and finally, how to convert it to a string and save it out to the user's machine or your own machine. Before we move on with the video, I just wanted to pop in here real quick and just inform you that this video and every single video in this playlist is based off this plugin right here, the JSON and HTTP utility plugin. So if you'd like to follow along, um, a link to the marketplace asset will be down in the description below. Uh, besides that, let's move on with the video. Okay, so first things first is we actually need to create a new fresh project where we can test out this plugin. So in this case, I'm going to create a new project in Unreal version 5.3.2. That is the latest version at the time of this recording and that is the version the plugin was tested with. So let me just launch this project and we'll be back shortly. Okay, so now that this window popped up, you can see my uh, previous projects or we can create a new one. So uh, in this case, we're gonna just create a new fresh project. So if we go into games and then third person and give it an appropriate name. So JSON HTTP testing, select it as blueprints, no starter content and just create. And then after a few seconds, uh, Unreal Engine should turn on. Okay, as you can see now, my Unreal Engine just turned on. This is a fresh third person template. So if I start it, you can see we can run around, jump and all of the good template stuff. But first thing what we have to do before we can do any JSON or HTTP uh, blueprinting is we actually need to enable the plugin. So up in the, um, in the engine, go up to the left hand side where it's edit, then under plugins, Press on plugins and then under installed, assuming you installed the plugin to your engine, you should be able to see the JSON and HTTP utility. So all you have to do is just hit this checklist right here and then it's going to ask you to restart your Unreal Editor. Just press restart now and then the project will restart and come back to where you left it from. So I'll be right back. Okay, so the project just restarted and it turned on this plugin um, window again. So all you have to do is just turn off this window and then you'll be back to the actual project itself. Um, and then from now on, if we try to go to any blueprint, so the character, for example, we should be able to access all of the HTTP and JSON nodes, as you can see right here. Here are all of the nodes, which I'm going to go over in this tutorial and showcase right here. All the nodes on the left, which you can see are all of the JSON utility nodes, which include creating a new JSON file and then turning an already existing JSON file into a usable string. And then on the right hand side, you can see all of the appropriate set nodes where Using these nodes, you can set custom data within a newly created JSON file. So first things first, let's start out by creating a new JSON file. So first is let's create a new JSON file as soon as the game begins. So on begin play, that is, oh, well, it's here. So let's just take this code and then just hook it at the end right here create a new JSON file and then store it as a variable and we'll rename it to main JSON. So this will indicate that this is the main JSON file which I am editing. This is the JSON file which is going to hold all of my data. 
So now, how would we go about setting our data into this JSON file? Well, what we can do is pull out straight from here where we set the variable and type in set JSON. And that's going to provide us with a list of all of the appropriate set functions. Or we can just use the variable down here, which this is my preferred method of doing it, using a, a variable and then typing in set JSON again. And then we can, as mentioned before, set whatever data we want. Before we create any new data, let's think of a scenario where we might have to do this. So let's, for example, let's say we are making a first person shooter and we want to store a, a specific player's data, which would include it's the player's username, the level, the score, and an inventory. So in this case, let's start out by creating an object. An object, what a JSON object is, it's basically a container which will contain more information about a specific topic within the JSON file. And if you can see in this list, there's two different object fields. There is set JSON object field and there is set new JSON object field. The difference is set new JSON object field will create entirely fresh and empty JSON object field for you to populate with new data. Alternative to this, you also have the set JSON object field, which takes an already existing object field and just places it within the main JSON file underneath a specific name. So if you already have, so let's say you already had an object field created somewhere else with custom data and you just wanted to place that object into a different JSON, this is what you would use. But if you want to create an entirely new object and populate it with your own data, you would create this one. So at the moment, this is what we want to do. So let's just create a new JSON object and get rid of this. Okay, so now we have created a new JSON object. Let's give it a name. So following from the example I gave before, we're trying to do a player inventory, player data. So let's call this object player information. And then within this object, we can now give specific player data. So let's say we want to set a new string field, which will contain the username of our player. And then the username will be JSON test. Moving on from the username, let's say we want to set its, uh, the player's level. So pulling out from new JSON object, we can then do set number for that, set JSON number field, give it a name. So this will be level, let's say the level is 18. And then pulling out from the new JSON object again, we can then set XP of the player. So we can do another number field and then give it the appropriate name of uh, exp and then give it the xp so let's say it has 150 xp and finally we can maybe decide if the player already finished the game or not so then pulling out again from the same place we can do set bull field which would then say game finished question mark and then the value would be yes for true true meaning yes the game was finished and congratulations, just like that, you created your first JSON object, your JSON file with custom data in it. But now, how would you go about testing it? Because if you was to try to print this, like this, as you can see, it doesn't actually connect into the print string. And that is because this is an actual, this is actually a JSON object structure and not a string. So what we have to do is use one more node which will take the whole structure and deserialize it into a usable string. So how to do this is pull out from new JSON object once more and then type in to string. And that is going to convert our actual full JSON file into a usable string. So now once that's converted, you can just plug in JSON string into print string, change the duration to 10 compile, save, and now when we start the game, in the top left, you'll see the contents of our JSON object debugged, right there. Username, JSON test, 
so everything's there. But you might realize something. We are missing a single object, which is the actual object field where that data is contained in. As you can see, all we have is username level exp and game finished, but we do not see player information. Why is that? Well, the reason is, as soon as we created a new JSON object, this output field right here outputs the newly created object field, but not the actual main JSON file. So if we want to actually print the whole file, we just have to, at the very end here, pass in the actual JSON file instead of using this new JSON object. If we continue using this chain here, we are only referencing this single object, but not the main JSON. So if you just, if you want to just access the current object you're working in, you will follow this chain of command and this will provide you the current object you're working in. But once you're done with a specific object and you do not need to manipulate it or see it anymore, you just reference back to the actual main JSON file, which is holding all of the information in it. This will actually print out the whole contents of your JSON file. So if we check again, if we go back and then go in game, as you can see, the whole contents of our JSON file is right here. And if we check the output log, we can also see it right here. Okay, so we went over all of the primitive data types and all of the primitive uh, set functions you can use. But let's say we want to set an array field within our JSON file. So let's say this array field should contain all of the information about a player's inventory. And let's say the player's inventory can hold a primary weapon, a secondary weapon, and two perks. How would we go about doing this? Well, I know that there is a function called set JSON array, which takes a JSON object, an array data, and a field name. So as every other JSON node, the JSON object input is the actual main JSON file where you want to create the array in. And then array data is, is that reference to JSON file, which contains all of the data you want to put into an array. And then finally, the field name is just the name of the field where the array is going to sit under. So to demonstrate this, let's unhook these two, move this to the side for now, and let's try to create a new array of data for our player. So to create a new array data, we actually need to create another JSON file. So this is easy. So we just have to pull out from here, just create JSON like this. And now this is going to be our array data. So let's just me, let me promote this to a variable. Just call it array data like this. And now we can pull it out and then set our custom data. So just as we did before, using the primitive string, bool, number, etc., we can set our data. So let's say we want to set a string field which is going to be our primary weapon primary weapon and let's say ak47 and then just connect these two and then let's say from here we want to set a secondary weapon which then is just going to be a pistol and then let's say max ammo so then let's say let's so then let's say we want to do max ammo so we do set number which will then be called max ammo, which will be 60. And then min minimum ammo, which will be five. Right after this, let's also set another string field, which will be perk one, which will be speed. And then set string, and then set st another string field for perk two which will be strength. So as you can see right here, we just created another JSON object right here, which is called array data. And then we populated that newly created JSON file with our inventory data, like right here. Now what we can do is take the set JSON array field node and now we have to decide where we want the array, array to be created. 
So I know I want to create an array in our main JSON file like this. And now I need to feed it the data I want to set into that array. Well, I already know the data because I just set it. So then I'll take this, pull this out and connect it into here and finally give it a name. So player inventory like this. And then if I just follow the same method as before, where I take the main JSON, convert it to string and then print it out, we should see the whole contents of the main JSON file in our print string and our output log. So if I press play now, we can see it all right here. And then in the, con in the output log also right here. Okay, so now we created two JSON files, we set custom data to JSON files, and we created an array field in a JSON file and printed it to, mm. to screen and console. But now what if you want to save it, save the contents of this JSON file to your machine? Well, all we have to do is from where it says print string, delete the print string and type in save file to disk and using the json string input that into raw data and then where it says file type in make file data what this does is it creates a new struct which will determine where the file is going to be placed and the name of the file so in my case let's just use the project directory so get project directory feed that into file directory and then give it a, a name I'm going to do tutorial one dot JSON. This is a very important step. You must not forget. You are in charge of assigning the extension of your file. So if you want to create a JSON file, do dot JSON. If you want to do a text file, do dot TXT. You must remember this or you're going to create empty files, which are not usable. Once this is done, you can compile, save, start the project like this and I'm in game. I can run around I'm all good. But now if I close the game and go into my project directory, you'll be able to see that I have a new JSON file here created, which is called tutorial1.json as I named it in the engine. And if I turn it on, you will see the contents of this JSON file, which is exactly what I set in editor. So it was play information with the username, level, XP, game finished, and the actual inventory as an array field. All formatted correctly to use with any other JSON uh, reader, writer. And now you can easily take your data from one project, paste it into another project, or even take it to other programs which allow you to read JSON data in and out from. So this is going to be the end of the first tutorial. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a little bit about how to use this plugin. In the next coming episodes, I will showcase how to load files into engine and finally how to send and receive HTTP requests from several different APIs. So till then, see ya.